Now, you d just because you don't have respect for a religion doesn't mean you don't love a person who's deceived. Right. Two different things. You can love the person who's deceived by a false religion and who's caught up in a lie and try to show them the truth, which is what we do, which is what we ought to do, which is you know, what we spend our time with, what we just spent our time doing in between service, of going out and trying to love people and show them, hey, this is the truth. But you don't have to respect what they believe. You don't have to respect the lie. It's nonsense. Don't get caught up in the world's philosophies and the vain, vain philosophies of man. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, look at verse number 14. The Bible reads, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? You, see, you can't just merge all these things and just, well, yeah, well, you know, I have respect for everything. Everything's kind of true. Everything, you know, you follow your beliefs, and I'm going to follow mine, and, and whatever. Look what it says in verse 16. And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. He's saying, you know what? Have nothing to do with the uncleanness, with the works of the devil. He said, come out from among them. And honestly, anyone who's going to put their trust in Christ, they need to come out from the falsehood that they believe. I mean, that's just something that, you know, when we talk about repentance and, and saving repentance and things like that, this is the repentance that someone needs. If someone believes in some false god, false idol, false religion, Catholicism, whatever it is, they need to stop trusting in that and put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is the repentance that you look for. It's, it's the repentance meet for salvation and when we see that with John the Baptist saying, bring forth fruits worthy of, of repentance, and what does he say? And, say? and think not to say within yourself, we have Abraham to our father. So when he was asking for the fruits that were worthy of repentance, it's, did their mindset really change? Or are they still trusting in the fact that they're physically a Jew? They're physically are Hebrew. They're physically descended from Abraham, so they're a chosen, they're a child of God. No, you can't trust in that. That's why he says, Show me, prove it, that you're not just trusting in that. Think not to say within yourselves that we were Abraham's seed. God's able these stones to raise up seed on Abraham. It doesn't, that doesn't matter. You have to be trusting in Christ. And that's the repentance that's needed for salvation. People need to, you can't, I mean, it's so stupid at so many levels. <laughs> People can't just be involved like, oh yeah, I'm a Buddhist and a Christian. Like, well, not really. If you, if you really put your faith in Christ, you're really born again, you know you can't be a Buddhist anymore. You can't be a Hindu anymore. You can't be a Catholic anymore. You can't, you know, there's all these different things. You can't be a Jehovah's Witness anymore. Now, you could be a witness for Jehovah, <laughs> but you can't be part of that cult that was, uh, you know, Charles Taze Russell started. Okay, be a Russellite. 